Are you planning to buy a home in an HOA neighborhood because you like them? Well, this video is all about HOAs and what to look for in the home buying process. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris. I am with Homes in 719.com, a realtor here in Colorado Springs. And I hope to tell you a little bit about the HOAs, what to look out for, how the process works, uh, what can bite you, what can't, and uh, give you a little bit of insight about this whole process as part of your home buying um, experience. So with that, uh, an HOA is definitely a polarizing topic. Some people love them, some people hate them, and typically I find out that people that hate them are people that don't read the documents that should be provided to them from the seller at time of buy and they find out later that they want to do a bunch of things to their house that they're not allowed to do. So with that, the state of Colorado has actually mandated a few things to try to help you avoid that. And the first thing is they, they mandate that the seller has to provide to the buyer all the documents that they need to review from the HOA and in Colorado they actually specify each individual document that the seller has to provide to make sure you actually get all the important ones so unfortunately though that means you get a thick stack of documents to review now when do you get those documents typically you'll get those after you have a home under contract you won't be able to review them prior to putting an offer in because the seller is just not going to hand out these big thick stacks of, of information and you're not going to have time to read them before you put your offer in anyway so put your offer in get it accepted the seller then has based on that contract a particular period of time to get you those documents and then you have a particular period of time to review them and get back to them as to whether or not you want to proceed with the contract and what i mean by that is if you object to anything in that those hoa documents that's a deal breaker you have to notify your agent and your agent will cancel the contract out. And the reason I say that is you can't go back to the HOA and say, I don't like the fact that I can't park my car on the street. You need to change that. They're not going to do that, right? So that's not how that process works. So either you're in or you're out. And if you're out, well, that's okay. Your agent can cancel the contract. You get your earnest money back and then you can go look at another house in another neighborhood. So with that though during that period of time there's a few documents i want to call your attention to to make sure you read them thoroughly because they're these are the ones that typically bite you in the butt later down the road so with that you want to look for the declarations document and in there will be the general rules and regulations associated with the hoa that affect your house and what you can do with it next would be a rules and regulations document that typically gets a little bit more detailed in there you might find out that you can't run any commercial business outside or in your property at your residence it's for residential use only no commercial use that would be in there uh, I might also talk about if you want to do an Airbnb at that property that you can't do it for less than 30 days and all the parties that stay there have to be members of the same family so things like that can restrict what your intentions are with the property uh, next some of the ones that my HOAs added that definitely caused some frustration with some of the buyers later is commercial vehicle policy. Here in my neighborhood, you cannot park a commercial vehicle at your property, and that means even a full-size pickup truck with stickers on the side of it and a ladder rack, you couldn't park that here uh, in my HOA. Now, they went back and revised things a little bit, but they didn't revise them totally. So where you can now have a full-size pickup truck with truck with a ladder rack on it you can't have a ladder in it when you park it in your driveway so every night you got to take the ladder off put it away bring it back out every morning that's kind of a pain for most contractors I, I work with contractors a lot and that is not something you want to be doing every night when you come home from work and every morning before you go to work so um, they also outline what is and isn't a commercial vehicle sometimes now to be clear not every HOA has that every every single HOA can define the rules and regulations according to what they want in their neighborhood. So although I'm calling it out here that you need to look for it, it may not exist. And that's why I will highly encourage you to read every document. You need to see why, why the covenants. Do you get a $25 fine? Do you get a $2 fine? Is it waivable? Uh, what's the escalation if you do it twice, three times, four times? What, what does that look like? Additionally, most HOAs have 
uh, language in there where they can lien your property and they can actually record that with the county recorder's uh, office and in the event that you sell your property they will get all their money anyway and if you really get delinquent they have the capacity to foreclose on that lien and technically take your house now there are some state guidelines and rules about what they can do there so I said that, but you always, if you get anywhere near that, you definitely want to talk to an attorney and make sure that you clearly understand your situation and what's going on in your covenants because everything gets a little muddy when it comes to law, right? Um, my HOA, for example, has a document specifically around parking where we cannot park cars in the street overnight. We have to be in our driveway, and as part of that, you cannot block the sidewalk because that's... Uh, American Disabilities Act issue where you block the sidewalk for someone in a wheelchair and they have to go out into the street that's not safe so you cannot block even remotely block the sidewalk and here in Colorado Springs they do actually have people that drive around from the city that check that and if you have a trailer hitch receiver that sticks out into that they'll nail you and so you'll get a, you'll get a fine for it um, so you know, look for those documents, make sure you read them. Additionally, the architectural documents, some HOAs like mine, we have a document that tells us what colors we can paint our house, what colors the shingles can be, how much the front yard needs to be grass, how much of it needs to be uh, zero scape, what trees we can plant, what we can do in the backyard if we want to put a shed back there that it needs to match our house, meaning it can't be a metal one, it's got to be wood sided, have the same shingles, be painted the same colors. Different HOAs have different rules, but they really can outline and significantly restrict what your use is. So if you wanted to put a barber shop in your house, you know, and do hair, you could might be restricted by that. You might be restricted by, you know, what you can store in your yard if you wanted to put a car in the backyard and store it there, or a boat, or an RV, a pop-up camper. They might say yay, or they might say no, you can't do that. And you'd want to know that before you buy the house, wouldn't you? So Definitely take a look at those documents that the, that the seller has to provide to the buyer during your, <laughs> during your due diligence period and let your agent know that you're either good or you're out and they can take care of the documents to make sure that it's processed appropriately and uh, you can either move on with the closing and buy your new home or stop and start looking for a new one as quickly as possible. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you might check out my YouTube channel because there's a whole bunch more videos there about buyers that you might dig as well and then uh, if you have any questions feel free to give me a call too my number is 719-332-3628 again 719-332-3628 and or check out our website at homesin719.com i'd love to be your realtor please give me a call today if you have time thanks bye now